In the last video, we covered deleting the default material that comes in with the import of the FBX and creating a new empty material instance here that is named according to the slot name here. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new variable here. So now we can refer to this object. We'll take a look at the documentation. So we want to go ahead and set the parent. It's read and write in the editor property and read only as a property. So we're going to want to use the editor property. And then over here, we have our material parent, which is going to be this. We're loading in the asset at this path. Now we can see our material instance now is using the parent material here as its parent. So now we want to come over and assign the material instance to this slot on the static mesh. To do that, we will take a look at the documentation for static mesh. It has a method called set material. It's going to need the material index and the new material. So the easy way to get the index is to grab it here. So this is our list. You get the index of the static material that we are iterating over. Here's our static mesh dot set material. So now we have our index. So that just means what slot. In this case, there's only one, but that could be a lot. And then the material, which will be our new material instance. And here we can see into our first slot, our new material instance is assigned. And uh, now we take a look at adding the textures as parameters to this material instance. So this part of the process has some minor technical complexity. Normally with the material instance, we'd be able to access the texture parameter values and then easily set the textures using the, the uh, parameter value property here. But in the case of a newly created material instance, the texture parameter values are going to be disabled. So essentially, if these things are not checked, we don't have a texture parameter value for this texture. So we need another method to access this information here. There is a class called the Material Editing Library. And on that class, there is a method called set material instance texture parameter value. It takes three arguments, the material instance, the parameter name, and the value, which in this case is going to be the texture. So getting the instance is going to be pretty easy and getting the texture is going to be pretty easy, but the parameter name is going to be the part that we need to think about. So when I set up this material parent, I created these texture inputs, these texture parameters here, and I gave them specific names. So there's BC for base color, N for normal map, and then ORM for uh, occlusion, roughness, and metalness. The textures all have those same names bc underscore n and underscore orm. So I can easily use the suffix here at the end of the, of the texture to correctly identify what the parameter needs to be. So let's go ahead and iterate over all the textures. And here is my populated textures list. First thing I need to do is get the suffix. You could also call it parameter name. That might be better. So we'll get the, the name of the texture. We'll do a split operation. We'll split it, the underscore, and we'll grab 
the last item in the list that's returned by that process. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab the Unreal Material Editing Library and then our method. This is going to have a few arguments, so I'm going to space it out a little bit. First thing is the material instance. The next thing is going to be the parameter name. And then the final argument will be the texture. All right, so as we can see, all of the textures are assigned to the appropriate slot on this material instance. The material instance has the correct parent and the material instance is assigned here to the static mesh. Now there's one significant error in the logic that we need to resolve. And that is currently we're iterating over the entire list of imported assets and taking all of the textures and putting them in this one list and then we're iterating over that list and just assigning them as we go. So if we have more than one asset with more than one set of textures, we're just gonna end up with whatever the last three textures were in that list. So we need to just do a quick check here and look for the asset name, which in this case is gonna be air conditioning. And then if the texture also has air conditioning in it, then we'll go ahead and assign it, but otherwise we'll skip it. First thing we need to do is get the asset name. So this will give us air conditioning here. And if we needed this version, this zero one, probably get rid of that, that underscore there so that uh, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't fail this test. And then down here in our list of textures, so this would save us if we had a lot of textures, we would make sure that we're only assigning the appropriate texture based on the naming convention. The other thing that would be cool is if we could save these assets. We we'll use editor asset library, has a method on it called save assets, but I need to create another list up here. Because again, we don't know how many material instances we're going to be making. And then we can throw all the new stuff into a list here. And this will be looking for a path. And there you go. There are probably a lot more things we could do with this in terms of features and bulletproofing, but this covers most of the moving parts. These kinds of quality of life tools can make a big difference in your project, and I highly recommend looking for opportunities to automate processes that are repetitive or tedious or prone to human error. I hope you've enjoyed these videos and appreciate you taking time to watch them. I'll be posting the commented code on my Unreal Developer Network page. Please feel free to post questions there or in the comment section below. Thanks.